Right now, Green Arrow is traveling the United States trying to stop a version of the Illuminati that is in the DC Universe, known as the Ninth Circle. He's going to different cities, which means he's teaming up with the superheroes of that city. Last time, he teamed up with The Flash and Wonder Woman. This time, he's going to meet up with Batman and Superman. When we last left off with Green Arrow, hard-traveled hero, he had managed to team up with The Flash and Wonder Woman to chase down the Ninth Circle, the DC Universe's version of the Illuminati, who's controlling everything within every major city within the US, headed up by Moira Queen. He's not quite aware of that yet, but his last clue was leading him to Metropolis to see none other than Lex Luthor. As Lex stands in his skybox looking over the city of Metropolis, Lex's secretary comes into the office stating that there's someone here to see him. Lex tells his secretary that he's busy, but the woman says that he's rather insistent, and his name is Green Arrow. Lex turns around to see three of his men holding Ollie at gunpoint, and he tells him that he's either incredibly brave or incredibly stupid. Ollie swings his bow, hitting both of the men, and then he whips his arrow, hitting the other, stating, Ninth nice Circle. After realigning himself, Ollie points his bow at Lex, telling him, You're the fattest cat of them all. Of course you'd be in business with them. Lex reaches down, grabbing a bust of himself, stating that it is true that they approached me, but I told them to follow their own cultist ideology and go to hell. Lex throws the bust, deflecting the arrow, and he says, I remember you using a compound bow, so your bow and life have been stripped away. But then Lex stops and looks over at Ollie, stating, Judging by the unfashionable goatee, scorch mark on your left leg, your costume being in rough shape, and arrows whittled from wood, you're broke. It generally takes money to be a costumed hero. So you would be here for money. Ali says, no. Well, fine, money factors into it, but not as you're implying. Also, at that very moment over at the Lex Pharma building, workers in the office begin to see something popping up on their screens. As the manager walks in, everyone stares at him, and then one of the workers holds up her phone asking, it's not true, is it? He reads the headlines and then he turns, jumping out the window. But in Metropolis, it's also the home to another caped superhero, Superman. And Superman catches the man telling him, I don't know what you're suffering from or what you've done, but everything is redeemable. He touches down on the man, shouts that he's not worth saving, and then another man points up. More people begin to jump out of the building as Superman asks, what's happening? Back in Lex's office, Lex explains that he knows all about the LexCorp employee who went rogue in DC while wearing one of their prototype suits. It was a pathetic attempt to discredit me, as if one person could ever bring down my company. Ollie tells him, maybe not just one, but the Ninth Circle is obviously going after your employees since they are all you got, and you'd be nothing without them. Lex says, let me make sure that we're on the same page. This man, Cyrus Broderick, he, along with the Ninth Circle, has a chess mastering takeover of Queen Industries, and it included framing Oliver Queen, orchestrated the bankruptcy of Seattle, the bailout to follow, and then rebranded it as Star City. And now they're coming for LexCorp, all because I refuse their invitation to invest in the Ninth Circle and join their board. I must say, that sounds rather delicious. Wonder what their next move will be. Ollie says that they're going to be doing the same thing to him that they did to Oliver Queen. He himself is irrelevant. It's his capital that matters. Just then, the secretary rushes into the office telling Lex Luthor that he better come and see this. Their stocks are taking an unprecedented nosedive. Lex grabs the remote, turning on the stocks, yelling, This can't be happening! My name is Gold! LexCorp is the cutting edge of technology, pharmaceuticals, and weaponry. Ollie tells him, it's not you, it's your people. The news begins to play, announcing that the employees of LexCorp offices around Metropolis are in a panic after a cyber attack has publicized affairs, abuse, and prostitution. Ollie then goes on stating, Lex Luthor is only as good as the people who work for him. All the skeletons in their closets have just come tumbling out. The nice circle is made up of people who are 12 steps ahead of the guy who's 12 steps ahead of everyone else even Lex Luthor. As he looks up, he sees people jumping out of the building and he launches an arrow to catch the falling employees and he tells Lex that if he wants to be a hero, stop the cyber attack. Ollie's arrow whips through the clothes of the two falling men and then he swings down on it to catch the woman that he missed. He says that whatever pain she's feeling, he's been there. She can come back from this, that he can promise. And a voice tells Ollie, well said, Green Arrow. I recognize the voice, but not the tone. Superman flies up, setting two more people down, and Ollie asks if they can skip the part where he tells them that he used to be an a-hole, but they've got a job to do. Back up in Lex's office, he gets to work on the virus spreading through his systems, thinking that this virus doesn't just hack and broadcast, but it wraps in a message of terror. Lex loosens his tie, stating, However cunning the Ninth Circle strategy, I'm about to overturn the chessboard. A new message will go out, one to target and transmit messages of hope and love. 
Outside, Superman asks Ollie if he can hear it. The sounds of laughter. It's spreading like a virus. A short while later, Ollie and Superman watch as the news reports that Lex has single-handedly purged the malware from his company and gave every employee a raise. Ollie watches and says, What a hero. And Superman tells him, No. Green Arrow is the hero here. Only you could have made the richest man in the world see past his ego. I also heard from Diana and The Flash about your quest. They say that you've changed. And I can see for myself that that is true. You can still be a disagreeable, sarcastic, loose cannon, but I'm proud. And Ollie tells him, Aw, thanks, America's dad. Just then, Lex flies down in his super suit, stating that he wishes to speak with their mutual friend. He would like to offer his thanks for offering some intelligence. Metropolis is the city of light, and where he must go next is a place of shadows. He will find some of the financial ties of the Ninth Circle, but where he's going, the wealthy aren't nearly as scrupulous as him. Ollie gets on his bike, and he gets over to the city of shadows, Gotham. Sometimes having a playboy alter ego has its perks and it allows one to blend into a high roller society without anyone suspecting a thing. And that is exactly what Ollie is doing in Gotham. Lex's intel was right. The Ninth Circle is here in Gotham and they're working with a particular group of bird lovers. As Ollie attends the party, an old acquaintance spots him and begins to make small talk. But as he goes on, he suggests that Ollie come with them to a little after party, something decadent and naughty, something that would fit his recent tastes. Later, the man brings Ollie to a meeting of the Court of the Owls. The headmaster tells the group of masked men that they are not just assassins, but businessmen. They spend so much time roosting in their decks and soaring in their jets, only to run the risk of forgetting what it means to have talents. And that is why tonight they are going to play a special game. One minute ago, their prey has just been released into the vast labyrinth of the Gotham Underground. They await their talents. Fly, owls, fly! All of the men begin to run into the underground sewers with one staying behind. The headmaster asks why he lingers, and the man strikes him, stating that he's already found his prey. The man then asks the headmaster, did he know that the cuckoos lay their eggs in other birds' nests? The mother doesn't know any better, and neither do the hatchlings. Once the cuckoo hatches, it destroys all the other birds in the nest. Ollie pulls his mask off, finishing by stating that this is going to be something like that. I'm here to hunt. But deep in the sewers, Batman is already fighting off the other owls that are in pursuit of one of the prey that the headmaster let loose. At another part of the sewers, Ollie finds an owl chasing after a young boy, and he quickly fires an arrow into the owl's shoulder. As Ollie strings him up, the man screams that it hurt, and Ollie tells him that it's not as bad as it's going to be when he takes off his mask to expose who he really is. The man begins to struggle, and Ollie says that it can't hurt that bad. All I have to do is pull out the arrow, and the pain will end. The man reaches up, pulling the arrow out, and as he begins to fall, his legs are wrapped after the battering, and he's pulled back up. Ollie calls out that he knew that he would save this man, though mercy's probably the last thing that he deserves. He pulls back at his bow, firing an arrow at the man as he hangs there, but Batman quickly throws another battering, breaking the arrow. Batman tells him, everyone's going to say that you're not a murderer. Don't prove them wrong. Ollie fires another arrow, asking why is cruelty always the right hand of profit? Why do 10,000 have to starve so that one man can feast? He continues firing arrows, forcing Batman to block them, and he asks, Why do those in power always abuse those without? Why are people so damn horrible? Batman looks directly at an arrow, and he grabs it, telling him, You know that's not true. Ollie reaches out to punch Batman, but Batman says, Look where we came from. Our families left us empires, and we're choosing to do good. The two struggle for power, and Ollie says, If our families are anything alike, then you would be better without one. But suddenly the boy from before screams, and Batman looks back to see the burned man asking who is he. Ollie tells him that that's the burned one. They've been butting heads ever since he left Seattle. He seems kind of like a lieutenant, always showing up. The burned one begins to breathe fire down on the two of them, and Batman spreads his cape to shield them from the blast. Once the fire fades, Ollie pulls back on his bow, aiming it at the burned one. And Batman then stops him, telling him, Your arrow's gonna need an upgrade. After placing a small device in the arrowhead, Batman tells him to aim for the pipe. Ollie shifts his aim, letting the arrow fly, is shooting a small explosive into the pipe behind the burned one. Water bursts out of it, knocking both the burned one and the boy into the water passage below. And without a second thought, Ollie jumps in to save the boy, while Batman throws a hook down, stating that it looks like I can count on you when it really matters. Later, as Ollie stands atop of a building, he tells Batman that he's supposed to vanish when he turns around. But you're still here, aren't you? Batman tells him, We both know that you're way out of your league right now. And Ollie snaps back, asking, You like it, right? Me out of the league? Batman tells him, What I mean to say is that it's time to stop sneaking around and acting like a one-man rebellion. This trouble with the Ninth Circle may have originated in Seattle, but it reaches across the country. It's impacting all of us. For the past few months, there have been some anomalous frequencies that coordinate with the launch of the Queen Industries satellite. Ollie asks what is he getting at, and Batman goes on telling him, They've been spying on collecting vulnerable information. Ollie looks up in the sky and he says, They're up in space. An eye in the sky, huh? And Batman hands him a device, telling him, 
You're gonna need help. This cross-country quest just went to space. As Ollie activates the device, the Green Lantern symbol appears, and Ollie knows what his next team-up is going to be. Hal Jordan. And there you have it, Green Arrow is going into space. Honestly, this is one of my favorite arcs happening in Green Arrow because you get to see amazing art, you get to see an amazing story, and you get to see his reactions and everyone's reactions to him in the Green Arrow storyline universe Justice League. Don't forget to check out the playlist down below because they keep referencing that he killed a man. Well, you might want to catch up on all of the Green Arrow storylines to find out what's going on with that. And subscribe because next week we're going to be bringing you the conclusion to Hard Traveled Hero. He's going to be teaming up. I don't remember. He's in space. It's he, Oh, the Green Lanterns, right. Green Lanterns.